Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Laura and I'm currently doing a series on Gothic and Romantic literature on my channel and today's video is slightly different. Normally I introduce you to one single story or novel or poem that is centered in the Gothic or Romantic tradition. But today I just want to quickly introduce you to the novels and stories that I plan to read in November, maybe also in December. And they range from 200 years and eight different countries. And I thought that's really interesting to see how the Gothic tradition is so huge and how far it spans. And I just quickly want to read the synopsis of each of the stories to you. So you get a quick overview of what I'm planning to read. And if you want to read along with me, then just drop me a comment or a message. You can also find me on Instagram under the Gothic bookshelf as well. So I'll be happy to see you there as well. So the first story that I want to read is Northanger Abbey, as you might know. It's from Jane Austen and was published in 1817. And it follows the spirited Catherine Morland as she navigates the world of social intricacies and romantic aspirations in the city of Bath in England. And it's um, very popular because it seems to combine like Austen's signature humor with a touch of Gothic mystery. And I think that's really interesting because I already read about it that is like a Gothic satire or a Gothic burlesque. And I cannot really imagine how that really feels and how it is to read that story. So I really want to read it because by now I only read very classical gothic stories with, as I already mentioned in this channel, haunted houses and witches and vampires and ghosts and just the classic scenes that you know. <laughs> so um, I think Northanger Abbey really stands out between all the novels that Jane Austen wrote and it's not one of her most popular ones and it's also a short novel so I think it's easy to read and I will make a video about that of course. The next one, only four years later, published in 1821 in Italy, from Alessandro Manzoni, The Betrothed. I will just read to you the synopsis here. Set in Lombardy during the Spanish occupation of the late 1620s, The Betrothed tells the story of two young lovers, Renzo and Lucia, prevented from marrying by the petty tyrant Don Rodrigo, who desires Lucia for himself. Forced to flee, they are then cruelly separated and must face many dangers, including plague, famine and imprisonment, and confront a variety of strange characters, and so on. And I think that sounds really interesting. Um, we're now in the late 1620s, so actually we're jumping back in time. And with the next story, we're jumping even further back in time, although it was published later. It was published in 1831. In France, it's The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo, which you maybe know as well, also from the movie. Um, I think there's actually several adaptations, but maybe you have to check that out. Um, it's like a grand medieval melodrama and it tells the story of the beautiful Esmeralda, who is um, a gypsy girl and she's loved by three men, like the archdeacon Frollo, his adoptive son Quasimodo, who is a bell ringer of Notre Dame Cathedral and the Captain Phoebus. And then there's a lot of things going on around her and it's also about her love to his Quasimodo and his love for her. And um, I haven't really read the novel yet, but it's standing on my shelves for ages, so I really want to get into that. If you want to read it with me, just let me know. The next story is from Switzerland. I haven't read any, anything Gothic from Switzerland yet, so I'm really excited. It's called The Black Spider by Jeremias Gotthelf. And it's a novella that allegorically depicts the pervasive nature of evil and societal corruption in a rural village through the metaphor of a deadly spider infestation. And I think that sounds really great. I love spiders. <laughs> I think they're a perfect Gothic element. Um, if you want to read that with me, let's, let me know as well. Then we're jumping a little further from 1842 to 1917 to Korea right now. And now we're like having that twist that is like not the typical Gothic novel, but drawing on Gothic elements. At least that's what I read about it, so I'm not sure. I will tell you whether I think it's true or not. 
It's called The Heartless, or I think it's Mu Jung by Yi Kuang Su. Um, and it is the story of a love triangle among three young people during the Japanese occupation. Yi Hyung Shik is a young man in his middle 20s who is teaching English at a middle school in Seoul. And he's brilliant but also shy and indecisive. He's torn between two women and I don't know what will happen but we will see, I will tell you about it. I think it's really interesting because also from Korea I haven't read many like um, older novels, only like the the ones that were popular within the last few years so um, I think that's really interesting. Then we're going to like also in the early 1900s I think it was difficult to find the real time because there are so many different stories and um, the publication of them was different so it's like the collection of mystery tales by Edogawa Ranpo. He is a Japanese writer and um, he got his pen name through the inspiration of Edgar Allan Poe because if you spell it in a different way it's Edgar Waran Poe <laughs> so it sounds like Edgar Allan Poe. I think that's really funny and it's quite creative as well. So these tales are really interesting as well. Um, he's actually really also very influenced by the Western mystery writers and also not only by Poe but also by Arthur Conan Doyle and he's actually one of Japanese most famous authors of these mystery tales and they say it's a true master of the short story form. So I read one of his stories already, it's called The Human Dare and I will talk about that soon as well. It's really well written, it's about a man building dares and he's so obsessed with that that he's turning himself like into a chair almost. He's building a chair that he can sit inside and it's really creepy but it's also brilliantly written I think. Then we're jumping to Mexico <laughs> and here we will stay actually because both novels are set in Mexico. The first one is written by a Mexican, it's Carlos Fuentes and it's called Aura or Aura and it's a story about regret and second chance is redemption and Filippo, the protagonist, answers an ad in the paper for a translation job and Consuelo, his new boss, asks him to translate the journal of um, his dead husband and her dead husband, I'm sorry. Um, and through this translation process he learns a lot of intimate details about her and um, he actually falls in love with the lady's niece and then he's like torn between these two women and um, it's like also the doppelganger motif I think I read about that it's really nice <laughs> I think it sounds promising it's also a short novel so that won't take me too long to read for the last part we're staying in Mexico City but we're jumping further ahead in time the author is Silvio, Silvia Moreno Garcia and she's a Mexican-Canadian, so I posted this as Canada. It's published in 2020 and the title is Mexican Gothic. And um, it is set in 1950. And it's about Noemi, a woman. She receives a letter from her cousin who is like convinced that her husband is planning to poison her. So she's sent to the home of her cousin and she quickly realizes that something weird is going on, the people are really controlling and the atmosphere is very unwelcoming and dense and I think it sounds great because there's so much tension going on and it's also interesting that it's set in the 1950s so it's really not in the typical gothic or Victorian era of the 1900s and I'm really interested and excited about that. So if you are interested as well just watch my videos about the the text that I've been talking about right now I will go to them into the detail about them and I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in my next one if you have any questions just drop down a comment below follow and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet see you in my next video bye bye